Hello, hello, good morning and welcome to church. It is so good to have you here this morning. If you're out in the foyer, do come on in. We're going to be starting worship very, very soon, so you don't want to miss a single second. But just to say a massive welcome if you are new, if you've recently been coming to Chroma, we would love to invite you to our welcome evening, which is happening tomorrow evening at 7.30. So whether you've been a few times or whether this is your first time, if you've never been to a welcome evening, this is the best place to get involved, to find out all about church, our story here, and how you can be part of the story too. So come along tomorrow, 7.30. You can head to the Connect Desk after to find out more information. But we're gonna get into worship. So why don't you stand to your feet, say hello to the person next to you, welcome them in to the house of the Lord this morning. And as always, there is space at the front, come and step in, come and step in. This is your invitation to step out. Maybe you've never done it before. Challenge yourself, push it, step out into the space. And this morning, I believe there's, a, there's an opportunity for us to press in to the promise of the Lord. You know, we come into His presence and there's a promise in Isaiah 61 that we receive a crown of beauty, that we receive the oil of joy and that we receive a garment of praise. This is our inheritance as children of God, that we are bestowed a crown of beauty, that we receive the oil of joy and we receive the garment of praise. And it says to get rid of the old. And I believe there's a shaking off that we need to do this morning. So just shake off the weak, shake off the stuff and say, Lord, I receive the garment of praise. You have to say it, I can't hear you. Lord, I receive the garment of praise where you're at, if you're comfortable, just raise your hands. We've come to worship the Lord this morning with our garment of praise on it is what we are created to do. So Heavenly Father, would You be exalted in this place? We thank You for Your promise of the crown of beauty, the oil of joy, the garment of praise. And Lord, this morning we worship You, we honour You, we glorify You. And we say, have your way, King Jesus. It is all about you, King Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my Jesus, come on. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. And you alone, I long to worship. You alone, I will sing it again.
yes you are, yes you are, yes you are My God is so good, so good, so good He's good, he's good Say you are, you are good All the time and all the time
to the beautiful one. You never let me go. You will never let me go. You're faithful to deliver. You're faithful to deliver. Everything changed. It's getting harder to recognize the person I was before I encountered Christ. I don't walk like I used to. I don't talk like I used to. I've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside. Again, everything. Oh, and everything changed. It's getting harder to recognize the person I was before I encountered Christ. I don't walk like I used to. I don't talk like I used to. I was washed from the inside. I've been washed. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah I know it was the blood It could have only been the blood And Hallelujah, hallelujah I know it was the blood It could have only been the blood Faithful to deliver. I cannot. No, I cannot explain. But there is nothing more real than this in the presence of God. Oh, what my heart experienced is when my shame hit the wayside and my sin met the most high. I was washed from the inside I was singing again No, I cannot explain Cause there is nothing more real than this In the presence of God Oh, what my heart experienced When my shame hit the wayside And my sin met the most high I was washed from the inside I was washed from the inside And hallelujah, hallelujah I know it was the blood It could have only been the blood Hallelujah, hallelujah I know it was the blood It could have only been the blood It's always been you, it's always been you It's never been about performance or perfection Or striving for acceptance Let me tell you, it's only by the blood And it's never been about deserving or earning 
It's a gift that's freely given Let me tell you It's only by Come on, you sing Does anybody Does anybody want to be holy? Your righteous Purified as always Let me tell you It's only by the blood Does anybody want to be worthy? Thank you for saving me Thank you for saving me It's never been about performance Or perfection Or striving for acceptance Let me tell you It's only by the blood And it's never been about deserving Or earning It's a gift that's freely given Oh, let me tell you Never let go. You made me new and you ran me. You held me. You know me. Thank you, Jesus. He is faithful. He is faithful. Yeah. He is faithful. He is faithful. He's the promise keeper. 
homens He's the Prince of Peace, the Son of God, the Son of God, oh and isn't He, isn't He wonderful, and isn't He wonderful, wonderful, oh yes, He's the Counselor, He's the Counselor. One more time, yes, you are wonderful, and yes, you are wonderful, wonderful. Oh, yes, he's the counselor, he's the counselor, the almighty Anybody got a friend in Jesus? 
he's been so good For the blood that washed me clean, for the wrongs that you redeemed, and I know your rainbow, and my eyes don't have to see one more reason to believe. Cause when I think of how you've blessed me, how your hand has never let me go.
just stay in this place. We're going to make a little gap in the middle. If you're sick in any way, come on down. If you have pain in your body, um, if you have a disease, yeah, um, someone's, someone's uh, pulled a, I think it's a pull of muscle in your left leg and it hurts all down there. Um, there's, some, there's some skin complaints and there's blood problems. Come on down, come on down in the middle, come on. Let's just stay in this place of worship. We've not finished yet. Come on, there's some more of you. Just come forward because we're going to get some more up as well. So just right forward, right forward. There's someone, uh, uh, you're getting persistent migraines, persistent. And I, I think they're, they're, they're hurting all down the side of your face as well. Come on down. Okay, have we got all the, now the Spirit of God's going to come in a moment to heal. His presence is here. Now there's also, there's some of you that need a friend. We're gonna sing that song again. Some of you need a friend this morning. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because servants don't know what their master's doing, but I call you friends. And Jesus is, is calling you into friendship this morning. If that's you, you need a friend. Come and stand around them. Come on down. You know you need a friend this morning. Come on down. There's more. If someone hasn't come forward, I, I don't know what's at the back. Is it kidneys or something at your back? But you've got shooting pains in the left-hand side at your back. Come on down. You're meant to be down the front. The Lord can sort it out in your, in your seat, but we won't get the testimony. So come on, come on down. Okay. This is where the miracles happen. We're standing in the presence of the Lord who's for us, who loves us. And we're gonna go straight back into worship. And as we, as we worship, the, the Spirit of God is gonna, the healing Spirit of God is gonna fall. Cause when I think of how you bless me, 
Come forward. What I want you to do is just do something you couldn't do. Check it out. Check it out. Move something that was pain in your body. Move it. Give it a move. Lord, I just pray that even as they um, stretch out in faith a bit now, Lord, that you would free limbs, that pain would lift off bodies. Lord, let your healing come. Let your healing power come. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. Just keep checking it out. Bend and move a bit. I know some things it's a little bit more difficult to check out. So if you came forward, don't leave yet. The Lord hasn't finished. But if, if something's changed, if there's some healing, give us a wave. Tim's got a microphone. Rachel's got a microphone. We'll gather some, just check it out. Give it a, not if, it, if nothing's changed, don't worry. That's all right. But just check it out, Tim. So Cade came forward um, for prayer for his shoulder. Um, he hasn't had been able to move his shoulder up and down without it popping out. Um, and it's been there all your life, right? And now you can move your shoulder. Show us. Move your shoulder and it doesn't come go. out at all and there's no Thank pain you, anymore. Lord. Absolutely Thank no you, more Lord. pain. Powerful. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Great job. What else? What else? Give us a wave. Just check it out.
So Marvellous came forward um, with severe pain in his back and it's completely and utterly gone. There is no more pain. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Check, keep checking, keep checking. The, the, the Lord can do these things in a moment. So just keep... Where are we? Give us a wave. Any more? I, I think there's a, there could be another one. Yep, Rachel, go on. So Zinzi came forward with pain in your stomach, right? And pain in your ankle and your knee. And the pain has completely gone. Jeep Hill, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Give it a good move around. Go on, move it around just to double check. Has it all gone? <laughs> Got another ankle healed as well. Praise Jesus. <laughs> She's walking just to test it. There you go. Praise Jesus. All good? Completely fine? Really? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are we doing any more? Okay, if you're receiving from the Lord, keep receiving, go and find a seat. We thank You, Lord, for Your healing. We thank You, Jesus, for the cross. Lord, we've sung the song of how very much we love You. And Lord, as You have come again and You have brought healing to our bodies and all that we are, we give You all the glory. And the people said, Amen, Amen. We're gonna take up our offering now. If you normally come to this church, you'll know that we always say that giving is a part of our worship that as we worship Him with our song and with our lives, we also worship Him with our generosity and our giving. So we're gonna take up our offering in a moment, but I just wanted to read this to you. This is Psalm 84 and it says this, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from those whose walk is upright. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in You. No good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is upright. How many of you know that if you have given Jesus your life and received His salvation, that you are upright in the Lord because of His grace, because of His cross. And we live under the unction of the Spirit in all of His ways and we do it by His grace. But it says this, it says, blessed is the man who trusts in you. You know, one of the ways that we trust in God is by bringing our tithes and our offerings. We have received so much. We are a blessed people because of what He has done, not because of what we do. But then in response, we do what the, what the Bible says. And one of those things is to give, to bring our tithes and offerings. And it's a, it's a demonstration of our trust in God. Because you see, if we don't trust the Lord with our money and with all of our life, but if we don't trust the Lord with our money, we kind of live in fear and poverty and lack. But if we trust God with our finances, then we live under the shadow of His wing, under the provision of His blessing and His shield. 
And we are a blessed people indeed. And so I want to invite you to bring your tithes and your offerings. The buckets are gonna go round. Um, There's some information on the screen and on your chairs for how you can give. However you give, as these buckets go round, I want you to thank the Lord for all that you have and thank the Lord that you are able to give to Him this morning. And as we do that, we're gonna say a declaration. So why don't you stand up? We love to say declarations here. If you have uh, not been in a church where they say declarations or if you're new or visiting this morning, we say that as a way of agreeing with the Word of God. It's like a way of us praying, let Your Kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, in our lives and in the provision of our lives. And so we're gonna say that together now. As we take up today's offering, we are believing the Lord for wholeness, peace, strength and health. We trust in Jesus with every part of our lives. We have nothing to fear for our Lord has overcome. In this moment, we know that Your wing shelters us. Your hand is stretched out to heal us. Yahweh Rapha, the Lord our healer. Yahweh Jireh, the Lord our provider. You have never failed and You're not about to start now. You are our God, our refuge in whom we trust for our health, our finances, our families and our lives. Thank You, Father, that as we encounter more of heaven, we can bring heaven encounters to all those around us. Amen. Why don't you stay standing and welcome Steve. Grab a seat. One of one of the one of the things that's fun about a, a relationship with God is it's it's two ways. And I was just down there this this morning as we were worshiping, and and I just felt the Lord say, "Don't you love the choir?" And I'm looking, man. I didn't know we had a choir. And then I realised what he meant. It's this lot. They're the, they're like they're like the choir. And you know, Tuesday night at revival prayer is choir practice. I had no idea. And then, then they come get to do it. And it was just like, the, 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 so often the singing and the, the dancing just leads us all into the presence of God. That was the reason churches had choirs. You are now the new choir, anyone who was down the front. So thank you. Right, what are we? Oh, Sermon on the Mount. Here we go. We're in a really sweet season at the moment. I, I, don't, I don't know the exact number, but we think that last, last week, I, before last Sunday, that just in that week, 30 people gave their lives to Jesus. How cool is that? I mean, it, just keeps, it just keeps happening and happening. And so when we, when we come to Jesus, and we've got so many people here who have started their walk with Jesus in the last year, um, what Jesus does is he, he doesn't just keep saying, stop sinning, stop sinning, stop sinning. What he does is actually he, he gives us um, a, a way of, an, of living. So the Sermon on the Mount that we're going through is, is Jesus' baseline. It's, it's how do I live as a Christian? How do I live as somebody who belongs to Jesus now and, and has the Holy Spirit in their life? What, who is He empowering me to be? So we, we've looked at salt and light. We are His people to, that display His goodness to the world. Why? Because He is in us. We, we said um, He fulfills the law and not a, I, you know, I learned a new word, not a jot or a tittle will be removed from the law. So we don't mess with the book. This is His Word. Uh, um, a few weeks ago, murder begins in the heart. You know, when we get, we, as we come to Jesus, we have to learn to control our, our anger and it starts in our, in our heart. So, and, and, and the way we do that is by our words. Our words now bless people. We don't curse people anymore. And then last week we were talking about not lusting, but actually looking in the right way at the right people. And then what I wanna talk a little bit about this week is marriage. And it's, it is sacred and it is God's blessing for all of us. Okay, so get your Bibles. Matthew 5. 
How you doing? Have you got your Bible? Why don't you stand? We're going to read as we... This is God's Word. The reason we stand for God's Word is it's... The, my, my words are down here. I say this every week. His Word is right up here. And we, we honour his, his Word. So here we go. So this is Matthew 5, and we're going to do thir- verse 31. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. We're probably not going to get any further, but let's just keep going. Again, you have heard it that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it's God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Amen. Grab a seat. Let me ask you a question. How many of you... Uh, come from homes where parents have separated or you have been divorced yourselves? How many? Yeah, yeah a, reason, a reasonable number. Okay. What I want, I want you to h- hear the word of the Lord this morning. Okay, this is, this, and, and you, know, you know me, I'm pretty relaxed, but this is what Jesus says to you. Mercy, mercy, mercy. I love you and I am absolutely for you. So if you have lived under divorce, you've been part of divorce, the Lord is for you, he loves you. Jesus is not in the business of beating up the broken. He's setting a new normal for his kingdom. Jesus always champions the wronged, the broken, the hurt, and the discarded. In fact, Isaiah says, a bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. You see, the words of Jesus are are there to instruct us so that we can move forward in our new life with him. Now, let's set the context of what Jesus is speaking. The Pharisees were preoccupied with the grounds for divorce. Jesus is preoccupied with the sanctity of marriage. Do you see the difference? That the Pharisees are going, what are the rules to get divorced? Jesus isn't even there. It's the wrong question. Jesus is talking about the, the eternal plan of God of marriage and His plan for each one of us. And you might go, but you don't understand, Steve, God wants me to be happy. No, He doesn't. God is not interested in your happiness. That might be a shock for some of you. He is interested in presenting you pure and spotless. Now, you will get joy on the way, but His prime concern is not that we're happy or think we're happy. His prime concern is that we thrive in life. And that's why Jesus is speaking this way in the Sermon on the Mount. Now, How many of you here are married or you would like to marry someday? There you go. There's there's more. Good. We're going to make a declaration. We've just done one about the the resource, all right? And I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it to you first so that I'm not pulling anything over on you because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a declaration and going, I don't know if I believe that. So what we're going to say is my marriage is blessed because I have the Holy Spirit living within me and I will never get divorced. Okay, all right, we say that? All right, that's, that's better than normal actually, there's at least 20 of you. Okay, here it, here it is, so repeat after, repeat after me. My marriage is blessed. My marriage is blessed. Because I have the Holy Spirit living in me. And I will never get divorced. Amen. There you go. Marriage is between a man and woman. It is a sacred binding. God brings two imperfect people together and makes them one. 
Together, you now start the adventure of following Jesus. So in Matthew 19, Jesus is answering some of the questions of the Pharisees. This is what he says. Have you not read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female? And he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife. The two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Marriage is God's plan. Now, not everyone gets married. There are many reasons why you might not get married. When you are the child of divorced parents and, you, or you've, and you've lived under an unhappy marriage, you, it might be easy for you to go, well, I, I just want to dismiss it. I don't, I don't want anything to do with marriage. But what I'm saying this morning is, and what Jesus sets at the baseline is, it's God's plan. That was the plan of God. Now, some of you have written off marriage and what you've said is, well, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Okay, and by, by that, what I mean is that in your mind, you're older than when people normally get married. And in the last few months, I've had, I've had the privilege and, um, to talk and pray for some people, some older people, and um, I'm praying for their marriage, and they, they're giggling, and they, they'll, they'll stop me praying, it's happened twice, and they say, you know we've only been married two years, right? And they're in their 70s, because they can see the way I'm praying, and I'm going, no, you're still on your honeymoon. <laughs> so I can't promise but what I'm saying is marriage isn't just for the young, okay? And don't stop looking. That's what we were talking about last week, right? Look at, look at the, for the, the right people. And if Sarah can have a baby in her old age, you can get married at any age. Are we in shock? <laughs> when we marry, we make an oath to each other. It is a binding covenant between a man and a woman before the Lord. God's plan is that a man will, and woman will leave their families to be joined to each other. All the blessings of these families and all the brokenness of these families coming together. You get it all. Now that means if you're thinking of getting married, you know, you've seen someone you like and, you, you know, there's a bit of desire. We talked about that last week. But there are some niggles. What I want to tell you as a married person, any niggles you have that, you know, things that irritate you a little bit about them before marriage, times it by 10 when you're married. They get worse. And you think, oh no, marriage will sort it out. No, it won't. So go in with your eyes open. But to marry, we make vows. And the context here is that, that really, if you can't keep your marriage vow, the most important vow you're ever going to make, how can you keep any other vow? That's, I mean, that's really the context of what Jesus is speaking. Now, we're going to talk about marriage and, and, and staying married this morning. And next time, I'll talk about vows and how they work. So... When Julia and I got married, we, we made some vows, and I was just thinking about them. The first thing we said, for better, for worse. Anyone married? Anyone said that? Do you remember that one? Remember that one? I just didn't know worse would happen so quickly. <laughs> I mean, you have to understand, we came, we came from two very different worlds. So, so in my family, we spoke about nothing and bottled it up. In her family, they spoke about everything really loudly. Okay, so we would have an argument and I would, I would run and hide in my shed. I was such a man. Um, and I'm hiding in the shed. She's standing at the back, guard, back door yelling at me. And I'm going, I'm like dying in the shed. What's happened here? What's going on? You know, we don't talk about these things. We just, we know I'm perfect. You know, and she's yelling at me. The neighbours know, everybody knows. And so, this is true. 
The truth is, I, I really did go into marriage believing I was perfect. And Juliet found out that I wasn't as perfect as I thought I was. <laughs> but I had to learn to stop hiding. I really did. I had to learn to stop hiding down the shed, locking myself in. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. But you know, when iron is sharpened iron, there's a lot of sparks. And if you have combustible materials around you, you're going to have a fire. All right? And now this is why God has brought you together. This was His plan. Two pieces of iron becoming sharper, not a bit of iron and a bit of wood getting battered. You see, what we needed in our marriage as we came together was the Holy Spirit to pour water on the sparks and fire on our passion. That's what we needed from the Holy Spirit, pulling us together in His presence. And the truth is, as I look back over our marriage, what has kept us together? The adventure of Jesus. That, that three-corded strand, Steve, Juliet, the, the, the Holy Spirit in our lives and running after His adventure. Then babies came along. Anyone had a baby? I'm talking to the guys as well, because you're still in shock. I, I really appreciate my sleep. I love my sleep. Some of you think that pulling an all-nighter because you have not got your work done in, in time for an exam makes you tired. You haven't experienced tiredness until babies come along. As Tim said this morning, you can't switch them off. You know, they're a joy. We love them, yet they demand everything. And I mean, I, we'd have a round in the middle of the night and I was so tired, I didn't even remember. In the morning, I wasn't a modern man in any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> we won't go into that. And we came to a decision, and again, this, is, uh, this was just our decision and it, we weren't trying to fill some stereotype, but that Juliet would stay at home and raise the children and that I would work. That's the decision we came to. And, and we were broke, but together we would be on God's adventure. That's, that's how we, um, we did it. Now, some of you might be asking, where is the better bit? You, know, you said for better, for worse. Steve, you, you know, what's the better bit? Well, before you were married, we are all very selfish. Marriage teaches us how to be selfless like Jesus. It's one of the plans of God, preferring our spouse and our children all while we follow Jesus. The better is we're not alone because the plan of marriage was it's, it, it's, it's not good for man or woman to be alone. So we get to do all of this together with Jesus. But if we are to be together, we must both change. Then they made me say, for richer, for poorer. Most marriages start off poorer. You know that, right? And hopefully get richer. We had nothing when we got married. We were married in a little hall, um, People in the church helped prepare the food for our, our reception. Our honeymoon was on the back of a church conference. And, and I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> We've been married nearly 30 years now. I'm still being reminded every wedding anniversary. <laughs> we lived in a little flat with drunks below us and drugs across the road. And what I would say to all of you, none of that mattered. Don't wait to get married until you have everything. Get married with what you have. Seek first the kingdom. That's the adventure. And become richer together because everything else will be added unto you while you're on the adventure. This is how we, we learn to walk with Jesus. We get to do it together. You know, I, our first house, getting to do it all up. The story of raising our kids on a building site. You know, we, we just had to, to trust the Lord for, for all His provision. 
We would always feel like we, we didn't have enough and we had to pray in. That's normal married life when you're, you're starting off in life and you're, 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 trying to, you're trying to make your way. And we, we have always tithed our income. And, and as we tithed our income to the Lord, even when we didn't have much, we have walked in the blessing of God always. And you, sometimes we feel blo- broke, but in Him we are always rich because of what He has deposited in us. You know, Juliet has always heard from the Lord first and, and, and you know, she's just really good at hearing from the Lord and pushing me forward. You know, and through our adventures, we've, we've often cried together. We've certainly included all our children in, in the ups and the downs of life. Sometimes I've worried over the finances, but we've always agreed each decision and moved forward together. And every year, even on the, the down years, the blessing of the Lord has been upon our life. And then, then we sit in sickness and health. Well, thankfully, we've been mostly healthy, but we've had times of sickness. You know, we've had a season of losing some babies. We've had broken bones, both of us. Sometimes stress and depression. Yes, even Christians. We've, done, we've been on marriage courses. We've been to counselling and supported each other. Do you know, in sickness, we take each other to the doctor. What do I mean? Sometimes when we're not well or we're not doing as well as we could be, we don't always realise ourselves. The wonderful thing about being in a marriage is that the other person can see that and have the courage to say, we need to go to the doctor. I mean, it happens to me all the time. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm man flu, you know, and I'm you know, fever and shaking and, you know, blood disorders and all the, I mean, I'm in agony. And Juliet just says, you need, I'm, you need to go to the doctor. And I, I don't go to the doctor, I'm a man. Men don't go to the doctor. And she says, I'm just phoning them now. Now, thankfully she can't get through, but I mean, um, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't say that. Um, but but she, when she sees I'm sick, she takes me to the doctor. When I see she's sick, when we're not doing well, we put ourselves in a place of health. And sometimes when you're sick, you don't want to go to that place of health, so you need to be taken to that place of health. That's the beauty of marriage. That's what Ecclesiastes 4.10 is talking about. If you fall down and you're on your own, you've got no one to help you pick you up. But if you fall down and you're, you, you have that, that person, they, they pick you up. And then we said to love, cherish, worship and, uh, and obey, or worship, stroke, obey. And this comes from Ephesians 5. And, and look, again, I know it's not cool for wives to obey their husbands today, but I, I just want to ask you why. I mean, why it wouldn't be? Because the husband has to love his wife as Jesus loves the church. And if my Bible reads right, that killed him. He died. He died because of his love for the church. And therefore, to, to obey someone who's died for you and given their life for you is really easy. But God has, has placed a, a, an, an order. You know, we agreed right at the beginning of our marriage that I would make all the important decisions and Juliet would make all the small ones. It's just we, we haven't had any important decisions yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm playing with you, all right? But seriously, there have been times that after discussion and prayer, sometimes I've said, no, I don't think we should do this. I love Jesus, I hear from God, I'm well aware that she hears from God better than I do. But if I'm wrong, the Holy Spirit will show me. And this has happened. But sometimes I've said no in order to be a protection for Juliet. Because as as a husband, I do protect my wife. Sometimes we get all worked up about things. And we need the Holy Spirit and each other to pour water to calm us down. 
not fire, because that's for the passion, remember? So you need to pour the water on. And, and you know, when I have said no, and when I have been wrong, and that God has proved that I'm wrong, there's a common little discussion we have, like, and who was right? <laughs> you were. That's how it works. But those moments are, are rare, are rare. But God has placed an order into marriage. And then till death us do part. And I've told my children that if I die under suspicious circumstances, they were. All right, she was after the insurance money. <laughs> but the truth is, the only thing that should really dissolve marriage is death. And that is where the victory is. Everything else is tragedy. And we've, we've actually, just in the last um, few months, um, had a, a number of funerals um, where death has dissolved a marriage. The last one, they'd been married for 58 years. That's victory. Yes, sorrow. Yes, a great um, hole and gap left. But what a wonderful testimony to the plan of God. Jesus makes a declaration over our marriages. Okay, we read it. That which God has joined together, let not man separate. He's not saying it's a good idea. He's not saying, don't do it. The, the Word who spoke the world into creation and said, let there be light, and there was, who has made his home in your life, if you've welcomed him in, you'll get a chance to do that in a minute, says that which God has joined together, let not man separate, full stop. That is the Word of God. That is what He's speaking over our lives. And that is what He wants us to live. And then, you know, we, oh, we're running out of, I, we, we gave each other's rings. I, I gave Juliet a ring, still got it on a finger. I've lost mine. I know, after six weeks, Oh, I know, I know, I know. Still comes up in conversation occasionally. Okay, I was, I was an engineer, right? We used to have to put cream on our hands, you know, not hand cream, barrier cream to protect our hands. And it was just like, so I'd always be taking my ring off because they'd just fall off because of the cream and I didn't put it back on. I know, I did offer to buy a new one, but it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> That's what, all right, big trouble. <laughs> and I said, with my body, I honour you. I honour you. God has reserved sexual intercourse for marriage, full stop. Two people would become one. All that I am, I give to you. That includes your dreams, callings, careers, and hopes. You lay them all down and you pick them up together, they are now reinterpreted through marriage. All the prophetic words you've had, all the hopes, all your dreams, you lay them down when you get married, and then you pick them up to, again together and you reinterpret what God has said to you together, how that works out. And then all that I have, I share with you. That includes your finances and your inheritances. You have given it all to each other. That means if you divorce, it is not yours to demand because you gave it away. You don't get it back. Let me tell you a couple of stories and then we'll finish. This is my favourite wedding one because it was fun in South End when we were leading the church there. We were doing a new believers class and there was two a couple um, who'd been married, they'd had all sorts of marriage problems, they've now met Jesus. And they said, oh, would you bless our, our marriage? Would you do it on a Sunday morning? I said, oh, I'd love to. Of course, yeah, 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 anytime. And I said, just give the office a call and um, we will um, we'll get it sorted out. Another couple 
I've been in the church really from the beginning, we, we, when we planted the, that church. And um, sadly, their marriage had um, disintegrated. I mean, when I say disintegrated, I mean disintegrated. He'd gone off with a girl that was the same age as his daughter. Um, she'd gone off with someone. They hated each other. Uh, I mean, it was just horrible. And we, did, we didn't see them. Anyway, he gives his life back to Jesus. And um, he came up to me and said, uh, we were just in church at the end of the service. He said, can my marriage be turn, turned around? Do you believe my marriage can be turned around? And I said, I believe God can do anything. Okay, but I can't make you a promise. All I can say you can do is serve Jesus. I said, what I want you to do is for the next year, I want you to put chairs out on a Sunday morning. And that's what he did. Every Sunday morning, he put chairs out at church. Anyway, back to the original couple. Um, They did phone the office and ask us to bless their marriage at two o'clock in the morning on the Saturday night before a Sunday. No one answered the phone because no one was there. So 10.30, which is when church started, they, I, I look up, we're about to start church, there's a woman in a wedding dress. She's like in all the gear, he's all dressed up, they've got family, they've got friends, they've brought everyone to church. And I'm looking, oh no. What are we gonna do? And I'm, I'm like, you know, vows, vows. That, where are they? You know, I, at that moment, I can't even remember the wedding vows I did. I'm thinking, my goodness. So, we, so I sent somebody to find me some wedding vows, any wedding. It wasn't in the time when you had the internet. You couldn't Google it. We had to find real book, you know, the, the book of prayer, where we, we, we'd find the vows. Anyway, somebody got the vows. The band are already up. Church is already starting and they're, they're looking and you can see them whispering to each other. There's a woman in a wedding dress. <laughs> yeah, they knew it was gonna be a different morning. Anyway, the worship, and during the worship, the Spirit of God comes. And he, just His presence, just like this morning. And, he, he's, and um, he said to me, he said, read out Malachi uh, 2, where it says the Lord hates diver- divorce. And one of the, uh, and you know, when the kingdom comes, it, it, Malachi is talking about marriages and families being restored. So I read that out and said, we're going to do these vows um, and if you want to renew your vows, you can come as well and join them. What I didn't know was this guy who'd been putting the chairs out every week, who'd had no contact with his wife, he's just up worshiping Jun and the presence of God. She comes in and stands next to him. So he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like me in the shed. Just stay in the presence, stay in the presence, stay in the presence. <laughs> All right. So he's, 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 he's in the presence. <sighs> and, and then I say, so when I invite people to renew their vows, he's like, oh no, she's going to think I've manufactured this. Oh, hold it. She's not even talking to me. I couldn't have. And she takes his hand and she says, let's go forward. Wow. All right. So we, this is what God does. So we do the marriage vows. There's people around them. We're taking them through their, through their vows. You know, the band are going, what is going on? <laughs> you know, um, and though that couple, I checked with Juliet, they're still together. They led some of our marriage stuff and, and they're, they're walking with Jesus. That's what God, why am I telling you this? There is nothing that Jesus can't redeem. <laughs> nothing. And you might be sitting here going, Steve, you don't understand. And look, I don't know your pain. All I'm saying is we have a God that can redeem any situation. All right? And, and, and I'm t- I tell you that story. Then August, I, I think it was August, 9.30, oh, we're well over. We'll finish with this, then we'll pray. August, um, just a few weeks ago. Um, service finished. Oh, there's, a, there's a couple. I, I thought, oh, I don't know that couple. I'm going to go and say hi to them. And I, I went to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Steve. Who are you? And as they turned around. I thought, I said, I know you. And he was a guy that had been coming along to church for a while. And, we'd, and he'd asked me to pray for him because um, their marriage had split up. And they, he couldn't, um, you know, he said, I, you know, I'm in a mess. All my marriage has fallen to bits. And, and I said, who's this? He said, this is my wife. 
Now, I wasn't sure. I thought, maybe he's picked up a new one, you know. <laughs> so I, I was cautious because, I mean, who knows? Um, I'm, and so I was cautious. He said, and then she piped up. She said, I came to presence and promise. And God has just done since then, he's just done such a work in our lives. We're giving it another go. Yes. Now, I, I, I'm telling you this because, because this is the hope of the gospel. The miracle of what Jesus can do. He can change our hearts. And one of the, you know, you might ask, well, is all this that's going on in church, is it real or is it a lot of froth? Well, <clears throat> Malachi talks about the coming of the kingdom. And, 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 and I want you to know when marriages are starting to be restored and when uh, bodies are being healed and when people are, are, are bowing to the, to the Lord and giving their lives to him, that's real. That's what's meant to happen in church. It is the fruit of God being in the church. Does he restore every marriage? No. Can he restore any marriage? Yes. And I know it takes two to tango. But I, I, I'm, I'm saying this because one, you're going to see this and we're going to see testimonies of this in coming weeks of what God is going to do here. Some of you who've written off getting married uh, are going to suddenly say, I'm getting married. Anybody? I often don't do the weddings now. Rachel and Tim do them. But um, if you're over 70 and get married, I'll do it. All right, we'll throw a party together. <laughs> But what you're, going to, what you're going to see is the healing of the community. That when the Spirit of God comes, He releases healthy relationships. Whether married, whether in our community, whether in our families. And that is one of the fruits of His presence amongst us. Because it is a testimony to the world. I'm done. Why don't you stand up? Okay. Gone on too long this morning. Right, if you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus, now is the time. Are you ready? The reason all this happens, the reason we worship, the reason for the joy, the, the reason for the stories of healings, the, the testimonies that literally hundreds of people have here now, it's because Jesus is in our midst and he's changed our lives. And if you're here this morning and you've never started that journey, you may be just, you know, been coming along, friends have brought you. But at some point, you have to take that step and say, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens that door and lets me in, we will come and make our home or eat with him, depending on translation that that space inside of your life that was designed to know God would be filled and you will never be the same again. And if that is you this morning, you've never done that. Maybe you did it many years ago and you, you, know, you were christened or you were confirmed and you've been away from the Lord or you've never done it, come on down now. Where are you? Come on down and give your life to Jesus. Welcome. Good choice. Were you the one that got the shoulder? How is it? Just check it. Is it how are we doing? Is it hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Good. Who else? Come on. Who else? There's a baby wanting to get saved. Come on now. Come on. Hello. Hey. Come on, are there some more? Time to give your life to Jesus. This is the best decision you will ever make. He gave his life for you so that you could have a relationship with him, that you could know God. This is the, it's like the, the, the starting gun of the race of life when we take that step and say, Jesus, I want to invite you in. Are there some more? If you invite, if you brought someone along and they're not moving yet, just poke them. Normally just, just, just here and near the kidneys, they'll yelp, but it, it gets them moving. Are there some more? 
We're going we're gonna to pray in a minute. Your heart is beating it down here. They're going. Hey. Hey. Hey there. Only God does this. Okay, we're going to pray. The rest of you, all of you stretch out your hands and these, you guys, we're going to pray. Would you repeat after me? They're all going to say it. Okay, but you, you, you repeat it. Lord Jesus, I thank You for coming to earth, for living for me so that I can have a new life. Thank You for going to the cross and dying for me to forgive my sin. I receive your forgiveness. And thank you for being raised from the dead so that I can live. I receive your life. You are my Lord and my King. And I welcome you in. Okay, we're gonna pray now that the Holy Spirit come. Holy Spirit, come and fill them. Come and fill them, Lord. Fill them up. You promised, you promised, Lord. You promised that if we open the door, you would come in. Come, Holy Spirit, fill them up. Fill them up. Fill the space. You are a great God. Come and fill them up, Lord. Fill them up. I pray that nothing would be the same again. More, 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 more. Come, Lord, come, Lord, more, more. Fill them, 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 fill them more. Come, Lord, come, Lord, more. Here he comes. There you go, there you go. Fill them up, Lord, fill them up. Fill them up, 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 fill them up. Thank you. Starting a brand new life, knowing God. Tune their spiritual senses, Lord. Their spirit come alive. You know, when the Bible says we're, we're dead, what it means is our spirit are dead. Our bodies are, are alive, but our spirits are dead. When the Holy Spirit comes into our life, our spirits spring to life. The, the part that's meant to run our life comes to life. More Lord, more Lord, new life, new birth. Calm Lord. Now we're gonna keep praying, they're gonna keep praying, they're gonna um, give you some materials in a minute. We're gonna finish worshiping. But I, I want some of you to respond. If you've I, we'll fill the space as always, but if you've if you have been part of uh, you know a child of divorce and your parents are swear, um I, I want you to respond and come, come forward to the Lord and we're just going to worship. We're going to worship and we're going to worship it off you. Okay? If you've been through divorce, come on forward. Come on forward. We're going we're gonna to worship it off you. There's no, no, no shame here. No, no shame here. We've, yeah, we're, we're all projects that the Lord is working on. His, His, His mercies are new every morning. Thank God. 
If, if some of you are older and you wanna get married, come and join, come on down. Come and do a step of faith. You know, just sneak in, sneak in. Come on down. Lord, we thank You for Your presence here this morning. We thank You that the glory is, is returning to the church and that under the glory, everything changes and nothing is impossible. And so Lord, I pray that literally as we worship now, You would wash us clean. Dis disappointments would lift off, that um, sadness would go, and maybe even some of the words we've spoken, the curses would just fall away to the side. And we would know we start a new life, a brand new life in Jesus Christ. And you have a glorious plan for every single person here. Fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the Kingdom. So we, we thank You, Lord, and we celebrate Your goodness.
Jesus, we love you, King Jesus. Why don't you just give him one more shout of praise? We love King Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Him. He is worthy. Guys, we have loved doing church with you this morning. Just a few things to tell you about. If you're a student, we have student lunch today. We have a roast dinner. So if you're at university, just wait in the foyer, meet some of the student team. We will feed you. Come and meet us. We would love to have you there. And also, if you've recently given your life to Jesus, we would love to invite you to New Life on a Tuesday evening at 7.30pm. We love you guys. Have an incredible week.